Hello and welcome to the second video in the Java tutorial series. In this video I'm going to talk about variables in Java and what different types we have. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a new project in IntelliJ. So go ahead and click create new project and make sure that you have Java 1.8 selected as the SDK and hit next and go ahead and create it from a template being the command line app. Click next, give it a name variable, click finish, and now IntelliJ has made a project for us with a main method already created. So let's go ahead and use this. So in here let's create our first variable. So what is a variable? A variable is a place in Java where you can store data. So let's say you want to store a name for example, that would be a string. So go ahead and type string, which is, is the type of the variable first and then type the name of the variable after that. So in this case the name of the variable is going to be name as well. So my name is Jacob. We could make another variable containing my age. My age would be an, an integer because it's a whole number without any decimal points. So let's go ahead and type int age and type 20. So to use the variables now, we can simply type the names of the variables whenever we need to access the data contained in them. So if you want to print them to the console, let's go ahead and write my name is. Then we use the operator plus in order to join two strings together. So write name plus and my age is and then again we can also join integers together with strings that would automatically convert the integer to a string so let's write age and try to run the program so now we see my name is Jacob and my age is 20 so we created two variables up here and we're also using them now in our console output so let's look at some of the different types of variables we have in Java. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is numbers. When we talk about numbers without any decimal points in Java, we have four different types to work with. The first one is called byte, and this is an 8-bit type, meaning that, it, that the size is 2 to the power of 8. So bytes can contain numbers between minus 128 and 127. Next one I'll show is called short. This is a 16-bit type, meaning that, it, that the size of it is 2 to the power of 16. Then we have int, as we saw before. This is a 32-bit type. And finally we have long, which is a 64-bit type. They can all contain numbers without any decimal points. So for example, we could go long 3000. Well, remember to give it a name, called some number. And we would now have a variable called some number of the type long with the value of 3000. When we want to save numbers with decimal points, we have two different types to work with. The first one is called float, and this is a 32-bit type. So let's try to put the number pi into a variable. So let's write pi and write the number 3.14. And now it's complaining that we apparently providing a double when it's expecting a float so we can fix this by writing f after the number specifying that this is in fact a float the other type we can use for decimal points are double the difference between float and double is that double is a 64-bit type apart from just numbers we can also save other things in variables for example, we could save a boolean value to a variable. A boolean value is a value that's either true or false. So the way you do this is write boolean some boolean equals true. Now we have a variable that's equal to true and it could also be equal to false. So later on when, when we're going to look at logics and especially if statements, we're going to use boolean statements a lot. As we saw before, we could also save strings in Java, but we can also go ahead and just save characters, which are simply single characters. So, for example, we could save a letter being A. 
it's important to notice that I use single quotes instead of double quotes. If I use double quotes, it's going to complain that I am trying to save a string as a character, which is not which is not possible. So remember to use single quotes. And then of course, as we saw before, we have the string that you save in double quotes. So this would be all the primitive types of Java, although string is not technically a primitive type, it is often considered as one as it behaves like one in most cases. So a thing that you can do with variables is to arrange them into arrays. An array is basically just a long sequence of the same data type. So if you for example want to save five integers in one variable, you would go ahead and create an array and you would have five positions in, the, in that variable for five different values. So we'd go ahead and say integer array, call it array, let it be equal to, and then go ahead and put some values into this. It could be one, two, three, four, five. And if we want to access these later on, let's say we want to print them to the console, we'd go ahead and write array and then sharp parentheses and write the position of the data we want to access. So the way that Java counts the positions is it starts with zero and then it adds one every time we move through the array. So the first one here would be position zero, position one, position two, three and four. So let's go ahead and try to access position zero and see what we get here. And it prints one to the console as expected. Let's try to get number four. And it prints five to the console also as expected. What happens if we try to access position five in the array? Well, we know that, that the last element is at position four. So let's try to do that and see what happens. So we get our first exception in this series. So exceptions are thrown in Java whenever errors occurs. So later on I'm going to talk about exceptions and how to handle them, but for now you just need to know that whenever you get an exception, something went wrong. In this case our exception is array index out of bounds, and that means that we tried to access something outside of the array, and Java complains about this and, throw, and throws an exception. So another cool thing that we can also do with arrays is to create arrays inside arrays. This is called multidimensional arrays. So the way that we do this is we write, instead of just one sharp parenthesis here, we write two. Now we told Java that we want to have an array containing arrays. So every position inside here should be arrays as well. So let's try to do that. 1.2. Let's do 3.4. Just go ahead and put these two in the last array and call them call them 5.6. So now we have an array containing arrays. So if we try to write position zero now, let's see what we get. So we get a pointer, meaning that we are currently pointing to an object. So in order to get the actual data out, we need to write array 0, meaning that we are accessing this array here, and then we need to write the position inside that array that we want. So 0, 0 would be 1, and 0, 1 should be 2, and in the same way 1, 0 should be 3, and so on and so on. So this concludes the second video in this series, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next video, bye!